Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melter Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can make drums using M Sound Factory. And specifically, I'm going to talk about physical modeling drums and using the modal filter. And modal synthesis, in my opinion, is really good for making drum sounds or any kind of percussive sounds. But sometimes making drum sounds can be a little bit tricky, so I thought I'd try to go over it in here. So let's start out here with the globals, turn the attack all the way down. Turn the sustain all the way up. I'll probably want to increase the release later, but we'll leave it like it is for now. But first we want to go to the generator. And I'm going to go into, I guess, the first part. And let's get a noise generator. We're going to use this as the exciter. So if I play it now, it's just white noise. And it sounds all right, but one thing that I don't like is the widening. I don't want my drum to sound like it's coming from like three different places. So let's turn the widening all the way down like this. Now it's a mono signal, so that's good. The second thing I want to do is I want to make this like an exciter so it sounds like something like a stick hitting the drum. So to get that sound, we're going to use this and change the volume from up in a sustaining sound. I'll Go into here and let's use envelope one. Click here to open it. Turn the attack all the way down. Turn the sustain all the way down. Now let's adjust the decay. I think around like 80 to 100 is good. And then let's just change the slope here so it goes down quickly. And if I play it now, it's not going to play anything. So we need to remember to adjust the depth. Let's just move it up here. So I think the default like negative 12. So let's just put it up around there. That kind of sounds like brushes, which is not really what we want, but for now, let's go with it. So I'm going to go and try to do things kind of out of order, create the basic sound, and then kind of refine it over time. So we have this basic exciter sound. Now let's get the resonator, and for that, we're going to use the uh, modal filter, not the actual resonator. Use the modal filter here, okay? And when I start it up, you see like, okay, there's only about three of them that are on. Uh, this preset I made is just all harmonics and it just sets everything up for me, turns the resonance up, turns the output up, and turns on all the harmonics like this. So if we play it now, it should sound almost like a string. So that's cool, but not really what we want. So we need to kind of go in there and adjust things. So one thing I might want to do is actually get the sound of a drum. And I can go into the structure here. If I open this up, you see like, oh, we can morph between it, but I don't really need to morph for this. Let's just use A. And I'll look on my hard disk for some type of drum sample or something. So you can use whatever you want with this. Uh, but if I click here where it says analyze sample, like load file, uh, you can adjust the threshold here, etc. cetera, uh, sort by frequency. I like to have that on. Expect in harmonic, since drums aren't harmonic and it's not going to, Harmonics won't, or the partials, I should say, are going to follow the harmonic series. I turn this expect in harmonic on. Just click load file, find whatever you want. Um, let me see here. What do I have? I have lots of stuff. Let's try Tycho's. I'm not sure exactly which one to use. Uh, oh, geez, I have way too many. Uh, let's just try Tycho hit one here. Okay. So now I have this, and I move it and decide which place in here do I want to take the sample from. Let's try about here, I guess. You can kind of choose that and find whichever one works best for you. Okay, close it. And when I play this, it's still not going to sound much like a Tycho drum, but we're getting there. I move it up, turn the volume up a little bit. Okay, so you can hear it better now, but you're like, whoa, that sounds like I'm, you know, hitting a, a tea kettle or something. That's not what we want. So. The next thing we're going to do is just adjust the resonance. So when you have the resonance all the way up, it's going to create those really bright sounds uh, where it sounds like a piece of metal. But if you turn it down, it's going to sound more like a drum or something. So listen as I do this. So around 21 is good. Let me move this down so in pitch so you can hear it and it sounds more like what you'd expect a drum to sound like. So 
But I think there you can actually hear like, oh, that kind of does sound like a drum a bit. But there's still more. You still hear that top end where it sounds like brushes or something. And we can and probably should get rid of that. So one thing I'm going to do here is add a filter between the modal filter and the noise. And what this is going to do, it's going to do a fast uh, filter sweep down. So I can leave this on 12, but I think I'll probably increase it to 24. And from here, what I can do is just adjust the filter or the frequency, and you can hear how it makes a difference in the sound. So zero, you barely hear anything, and if I move it around, you'll hear it uh, emphasize different frequencies. Okay, so let's go with that and let's start it at zero. Actually, let's start it at perhaps 0.5. I don't want to go all the way down to zero. And then from here, let's add another envelope. I used envelope one before, so let's use envelope two. Let's do something similar, but this time I want it to be a little bit faster, maybe like 12 milliseconds. Like that. And turn the depth up. Uh, this. So I'm liking that. That's sounding how I think like a drum should sound. Now from here, there's other things we can do. Uh, I can use this resonance control and this will make it sound like I'm hitting it harder or softer. Probably too much. Uh, now one thing I might want to do here is go into the globals and I'm just going to turn the velocity off here and I'll have the velocity control the resonance instead. So now anytime I hit it, it's going to be the same volume. Although as you'll notice, because it's physical modeling, each time you hit it, it does sound slightly different, even though everything here, the velocity wise is the same. So you think, oh, it should sound like, you know, a sample it sounds the exact same every time, but this time it doesn't. And that's one of the beauties of physical modeling. But let's add some more differences here. Let's move the resonance down to like 15 or so. Actually, let me see. There, it's right at the bottom of that uh, little play button. Move it down to 15 here. Around that anyways. Uh, I'll go into this and let's just hit velocity here. And move it up until it's around 40%. So this is one thing they added here, the max, and it shows you the exact value here, which is great. Really useful for me. So I don't have to guess anymore. I really didn't need to eyeball that. I don't know why I did that. But... Anyways, you get the idea. And if I press it uh, very lightly, it sounds like this. And if I hit it hard, it sounds like this. So I like this. So to me, like so far, this is sounding pretty good. I could do more I, if I think like, ah, oh, this is a little bit too low in volume. I can increase the drive here. maybe clipping, sorry about that, uh, or I can leave that off, I'll just leave it at like a low amount like that, and so far everything's good, but let's say if I want to make it a little bit uh, punchier perhaps. So something else I could do is I can do a, a pitch drop. So one thing I might want to do is go into here, semitones, and let's add even one more envelope. So I'm kind of getting crazy now with envelopes, but hopefully it's making it sound better. So envelope three here, open this up, and I'm gonna do something very, actually, I don't need to do that, I can just use envelope two, can't I? Yes. Envelope two here, so I have something similar, short envelope, and this time it's gonna be controlling the semitones, the pitch. So here, it should sound normal, not too punchy. Turn the volume down a little bit beforehand. What if I turn the depth up? So you get the idea by adjusting this depth and the pitch drop, uh, just like with an 808 or something, it just gives it a little bit more punch. So you can adjust that. Another thing, if I do want to mess with the 
uh, synths and things like that. Actually, I should show this first. So here in the noise, I want to make this a little bit longer. So let's increase the release here. Let's say like 800, I guess. Um, let's see the filter. I think everything else is okay. And let me increase the global here to like around a thousand or so. So that way, when I take my finger off, it should stay in a little bit longer. Okay, so I think it's sounding pretty good. Let's say if we want a slight like pitch drop, which you sometimes hear with drums. So I can go into here. I can do one more envelope here. Set this up. Go down. Have the pitch drop. Let's say maybe eighty or so like that. Put the depth all the way up. And now you hear like a small pitch drop here, which should sound like you'd hear in like a timpani drum or a tom drum. Yeah, if I turn it off, it sounds like this. You can see that it's kind of subtle. If I make it longer, maybe you can hear it a little bit better. So I think that's a cool thing you can do with that. And from here, there's even one other thing I can do. Actually, one of the things I might want to do here is you notice where it says count. This shows you how many harmonics. And some of these will probably be useful. It's like, oh, okay, I want these. But some of them are kind of just wasting CPU. So I probably want to hit it and decrease these until I can kind of hear a difference. Uh, somewhere around like 12 to 16 seems good. And so, as you heard, there's already some variation in there, which was good, but let's add a little bit more. I think I showed this in one of my modal, uh, let's say, the uh, physical modeling videos, but I'll show it again. So, if you want to make variations so the hits don't sound the exact same each time, which they already do, but let's say you want to do more. We can go into here, into the volume. I'll hit this, go to True Random, click on it, and then just add a little bit of variation here. Not too much. Let's try about five decibels or so, and then change it to up and down. So it can go five up or five down. You think, okay, it's just one harmonic. Is that, is that going to make a difference? Probably not. But if I copy it like this, and then I do it a bunch of times for every single harmonic in here, I can just do copy and paste. So if you're not using these copies and pastes, you're missing out. This saves you lots of time and effort. So I can easily go through all of these 14 to do this by hand would be very tedious. But copying and pasting it is only somewhat tedious. <laughs> so almost done here. And when we get done, each of these harmonics will move randomly each time. So it will sound slightly different, like I'm hitting it on a different place in the drum. Let me close all of these. Okay, we got them. Now, look at these as I hit the drum and notice how they change and listen to how they change. So that's cool because it sounds different each time. And for the, let me turn this off actually. This, this pitch drop is annoying me a little bit. But you can go back and we could actually change drums also. Although I should warn you, once you change drums, you'll probably have to adjust some other things like your volume, uh, perhaps your filter settings, etc. But let's try it on one more. Try, I guess, tom drum. This. Find a good place in here where the harmonics are up somewhat high. They don't have to be too high. Maybe here. Okay. And I imagine at first it may not sound great, but let's give it a, a shot.
So there you go. And then on top of that, we could go into the effects and we could add whatever we wanted to. So if you think, oh, okay, there's too much bass, I can just kind of go into here and remove some of it like this. I could do more EQing, compressing. I might want to add some, uh, like, I don't know, a chamber or something to it or a hall or who knows what. And through that, you can get all sorts of different sounds. Like perhaps this. So, I hope that gave you an idea of what you can do and how you can synthesize your own drum sounds. So by, I think the main thing you should probably take away from this is that by turning down the resonance, you can create more percussive sounds that sound like drums. And if you turn it up, you get more of like the uh, metal sounds. So by doing that, you can kind of simulate lots of different types of drums. And if you wanted to morph them using the structures, you could. So you have four different uh, places where you can import drums and you can come up with your own unique drums that have never been heard before. And also you can alter these in various ways. I kind of wish I had an MPE controller that for drums so I can map it so each place I hit it on the drum, it would get a slightly different sound. But that's for somebody else to mess with. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and check out all the other plugins at melderproduction.com. Until next time, see you.